Let's talk about artificial gravity and conical pendulums. So artificial gravity is not just science fiction. Um, there are ways to trick the human body into thinking that there's gravity when there isn't. Uh, one way is imagine a big cylinder and imagine that cylinder is spinning around and a person is on the inside edge of that cylinder. Okay, so that person will feel a force toward the center, assuming that they're moving around with the cylinder. And the force that they will feel that's pushing them towards the center, the centripetal force, in this case is a normal force. The normal force is the force related to how you feel your weight. So it's not the actual gravitational force that makes you feel heavy, not directly. It's the normal force that makes you feel heavy. And one way to, to think about this, one way to understand this, is think about when you're standing on a flat surface and not moving. Then your normal force is balanced by your weight. They are the same size. So in that case, your normal force and your weight have the same magnitude. Okay, now imagine that you're in an elevator and the elevator is accelerating upward. When the elevator accelerates upward, you have to have a greater normal force than weight. So the normal force is bigger than the weight is. And in that case, you feel heavier. When an elevator accelerates upward, I don't know if you've ever done that, you probably have, but you feel heavier in that moment. And that's because the normal force is greater. The normal force is the force related to how heavy you feel. So back to that person on the space station that's rotating, there's a normal force on that person. That person will feel like they have a weight. Now they don't technically have a gravitational force. They don't have that weight force acting on them. They're out in space somewhere. But that person will sort of be tricked into feeling like they're heavy because of that normal force. Hmm. So that's an example of artificial gravity. Um, this has been expanded on. So over 50 years ago, someone came up with this O'Neill cylinder. It was probably a guy named O'Neill. Um, and the O'Neill cylinder, the idea is that, you, just like I explained, you have a big cylinder, it rotates, and people live on the inside of it. And there are lots of science fiction images of people walking around on these giant cylinders, uh, and they are just entire worlds inside of it. And it's been used a lot in movies, so like 2001 A Space Odyssey, uh, Interstellar, um, The Martian, uh, the TV show The Expanse. Um, yeah, it's been used a lot in science fiction. It's never been done. It's never been created. Um, and there's some pretty good reasons why not. Uh, first is money. It'll cost a lot of money to make these things. And the budget just isn't there. And in a lot of ways, the engineering doesn't exist to do this. Um, and also, you can't build it on a small scale. You have to build it really big for it to work. Um, if it were small, like if it were the size of a person and the person was walking around on the outs on the on the inside edge and then their head was kind of at the center like if it was it was that small then their head wouldn't really be rotating their head wouldn't really have a velocity but their feet would so their feet would feel heavy but their head wouldn't and the person would just feel confused and they'd probably end up throwing up everywhere um but let's do a quick example imagine you got this big cylinder there's a person there um let's make it a relatively small cylinder let's make it 10 meters in radius and the outside edge let's make it move at 10 meters per second and we'll put a 60 kilogram person there on the edge uh, walking around in the cylinder so first thing we'll do is we'll find the acceleration of the person the centripetal acceleration so centripetal acceleration is v squared over r we know v we know r so there we go we can solve for the acceleration of the person it's 10 meters per second squared toward the center Okay, um, let's find the normal force on the person. Well, in this case, the normal force is the centripetal force. So the normal force has to equal mv squared over r. We know m, we know v, we know r. So the normal force on the person is 600 newtons. And that's a measure of how heavy they feel. Let's compare it to what they would feel on Earth. So let's think about what the normal force on the person would be on Earth. On Earth, the normal force is balanced by the weight um, if they're just standing on the surface. Uh, so the normal force would be 588 newtons upward. 
So, on the space station, the normal force is 600 newtons. On Earth, the normal force would be 588 newtons. So, in this particular space station, they would feel heavier than they would on Earth, because there's a greater normal force on them. Okay. So, let's try the conical pendulum. Um, the conical pendulum is an idea where you have an object on the end of a string, so just like you would with a regular pendulum, but instead of it swinging back and forth, the object at the end travels around in a circle. And if you imagine the string that's attached, it would trace out the sides of a cone. And that's why it's called a conical pendulum. All right. So in a conical pendulum, let's draw the forces that are present. Well, we definitely have a weight, so I'll draw the weight there. Uh, and we definitely have a tension force because there's a string. Um, and I'm also going to draw in components. So let's split the tension force into the components. And before I do that, let's put in an angle. Let's call it theta. And theta, we can draw it in a different place. So I'm going to draw a vertical line, put in a theta. And if we put the components of the tension force there, there's going to be a vertical component and there's going to be a horizontal component. Now, if we look at this, the weight, the weight is going to be balanced by the vertical component of the tension force. Right? One is up, one is down, and that bob is not accelerating up and down. That bob is accelerating toward the center. There has to be a centripetal force. Well, that centripetal force toward the center is the horizontal component of the tension force. Right? The horizontal component of the tension force is the only thing pointing toward the center here. So, centripetal force, and the vertical component of the tension force is balanced by the weight. All right. Um, so let's try out an example. So for this example, let's uh, draw the situation. And let's make it a 0.255 kilogram ball. Let's make the circle have a radius of 0.5 meters. And let's make that angle between the string and a vertical axis. Let's make that angle 10 degrees. And we're going to find two things. Let's find the magnitude of the tension force. And let's find the speed of the ball. All right. So again, we know that everything vertically is balanced. So the vertical component of the tension force is balanced by the weight. Hmm. Well, the vertical component of the tension force, that is the tension force times the cosine of theta, right? It's the adjacent side, so it's related to cosine. So that side is Ft cosine theta, and that has to balance the weight. So we can write down an equation. Ft cosine theta has to equal the weight. They have to have the same magnitude. Now, I'm leaving out all the directions in there. I'm just saying that they have to have the same size. Right? I'm after the magnitude. So if I know that, okay, Ft cosine 10 degrees is equal to the weight, and the weight is m times g. So 0.255 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. And voila, we can solve for the tension force. It's 2.54 newtons. And we don't need to give a direction because I only asked for the magnitude. Okay, and we want to find the speed. So let's find the speed of that pendulum bob. Um, and for that, let's see. Well, we can relate the centripetal force to the speed. The centripetal force is mv squared over r. And the centripetal force is the horizontal component of the tension force. And that horizontal component, that's tension force times sine theta. So to find v, because the horizontal component of the tension force is the centripetal force, we can write down Ft sine theta, the horizontal component of the tension force, is equal to mv squared over r, which is the centripetal force. We know the tension force is 2.54 newtons, and we multiply that by sine of 10 degrees. That has to equal the mass times v squared over r. And we have enough information to solve for v. V is equal to 0 0.930 meters per second. Now, in problems, there will be many different ways that I can give you certain information and not give you other information. But 
usually at the end of the day, the key to these problems is seeing that the vertical component of the tension force is balanced by the weight. So they have to have the same size. And the centripetal force is provided by the horizontal component of the tension force. Okay, so keep that in mind. One other little trick that's common is there's another triangle by geometry, and I'll draw it um, right here. If you know the string length and the angle, sometimes I'll give you the string length but not the radius, but if you know the string length, you can find the radius. And I'll leave the rest of it to you, but if you look, there's a triangle right there, and that's a pretty big hint.